the move that you're about to see is going to blow your mind. So I was going through my database of chess games on my computer and I stumbled upon this gem, a game that I played on ICC, the internet chess club, where hardly anyone plays anymore because no one wants to spend $5 a month just to play online chess. But back in the day, it was a pretty popular place to play, and I kind of set up the board and the piece style here to replicate the way the ICC interface used to look. Well, still looks, but no one goes there. And at the time, this was in 2015, I was rated about 1,500, at least in online play. And I was playing against an opponent called Clone, also rated very similarly to me. And he played the Sicilian Dragon against me. And after about 20 moves, we get to this position where I somehow managed to get my queen trapped on h6, although it is very close to his king. And my opponent just played the move knight to e5, attacking this pawn. And before I get to the crazy move, I actually missed a win here, although it's definitely not simple. And I'm not surprised that I missed it. In this position, I actually could have played the move f6. The idea is that it threatens this checkmate, and if the pawn is captured, it opens up this diagonal for the bishop. And now after bishop to e4, this is almost unstoppable checkmate threat against the knight. All black can do is delay. And after bishop takes, knight gets in the way. I'm just going to eat through the knight. And next move is going to be a checkmate. But this f6 move would have been really tough to find. So instead, I actually played knight to e4 here, attacking this pawn. And my opponent played knight takes g4 hitting my queen, and where's this queen going? It can't take this pawn because then the knight recaptures. And are there any other safe squares? Definitely seems like the answer to that question is no. But in this position, I actually found a crazy way out. With the move, are you ready for this? Queen to g6. Now, this was a five minute blitz game, so maybe this was just a complete desperate move. I don't remember what I was thinking at the time, but maybe I realized that this rook here might become powerful if the queen gets taken, and my opponent actually fell for the bait. Now, before I get into the crazy continuation and some possible variations on what could have happened, let's just look at what would have happened if my opponent played the engine's favorite move here, not taking the queen, but actually playing queen to e8 just to defend this pawn. Then rook to g1 could be played. After knight to e3, targeting the bishop, which as you're going to see soon is very important here, and now rook takes g5 can be played. And after pawn takes queen, we see that the rook is now hitting this knight. And after, say, knight takes d5, rook takes knight check, king h8, and now rook to h5. This is all very crazy. White is threatening mate in two. For example, if black tries to just attack the rook, then we have a checkmate. But black can weasel out by sacrificing the rook. And now rook h8 check, king g7 check. And white can force a perpetual because the king can never escape from the checks of the rooks. And it's just going to be a back and forth with the knight guarding the square. And the king is never going to escape, but white can't checkmate. But this is all a very hypothetical situation, relying on black spotting a move that's not easy to find. But instead, my opponent just played the natural move. F takes g6, picking up a queen. Looks good. But then, pawn takes g6. And although I'm down a queen for a pawn, black is in a lot of trouble because I'm now threatening maiden one against this knight. For example, with a simple move like knight to e3, rook takes h7 is mate. So my opponent tried to move their knight back. Now, of course, I can't take immediately because the knight defends, but I just took the knight. And now again, if rook takes, rook takes h7 is mate. So my opponent... Went for a run for it with the king. King to g7, but now knight to h5 check. And here my opponent made a fatal mistake going back to h8, and I managed to end this game with a nice little checkmate. Pawn to g7. But, of course, when I was looking back at this, I asked myself, what would have happened if my opponent played king to h6? Because now, even though it's in the line of the rook, the knight's in the way, and there's no checkmate. And this is actually a very interesting line because white has a whole bunch of moves that would win the game. They can basically move their knight anywhere. Knight to g3, knight to f4, knight to f6. Knight to f4 would just result in the king going back. And then a knight fork picking up the queen and white just wins. Let's say king f6, knight takes here, 
and after Rook takes, I'm just up a piece. But an even more interesting variation would go like this. Knight to g3. Of course, it's a check. Black has no way to block. Only move is back with the king. Now Rook takes h7. Again, only move is to go to f6. And now, can you find the way to win here for white? A quiet move. Rook to e1. Threatening mate. But now seemingly, black can weasel out by putting their pawn in e5, stopping the rook from coming to e6. But, this is now a forced checkmate. Knight to h5 check. King takes. Rook to f1 check. King to g4. No way to block, and if king takes here, bishop e4 check. Hitting the king, and we see the king can't take the rook, can't take the knight, and can't run. Only thing they can do is block, and now it's a mate. With the bishop protecting the rook, the rook protecting the knight, and then basically making a box around the king. So if the king does go to g4, now it's a force mate in three. Again, pause and see if you can find it. The move here is bishop to e6 check. And after rook blocks, bishop takes, king to h4, rook to h1 ends the game, with the king ending up on h4, trapped by the two rooks, and of course the bishop, the knight, everyone is involved, despite the fact that black still has a queen on the board, they never moved it, and now they're getting checkmated. So I thought that that was a very crazy game, because it's not every day that you sacrifice your queen, especially for just one pawn, and then manage to win only a few moves later. But this did happen, and I managed to score a pretty nice victory in a blitz game. Let me know what you thought of this game, and if you were able to ever successfully sacrifice your queen. And if not, I hope you get a crazy game in like this at some point in the future.